Hey guys, John with Mini Motors USA. Um, basically, we're trying to do these videos to help um, you if you have any issues going forward and you do want to work on your scooters. Um, we got this one in. Uh, it's a Spider. It has what I believe to be a bad motor controller. Um, so we're going to go through it, tell you how I would diagnose the issue, um, and then uh, show you how to fix it. It's really not a terrible fix. It should take about uh, 40 minutes or so to, to get through it. Um, so in diagnosing a motor controller, there's a couple things you want to look out for first. Uh, no, number one is if your front motor is out, you always want to look at your switch, number one. Um, so we did a video on uh, checking a switch with continuity tester. Definitely have a look at that. Um, you can run that test on your switch to see if it's good or bad. In this case, uh, we have an issue where the front motor is spinning, but the back doesn't. So the switch is kind of out of the question there. Um, the other thing you want to look at before you replace the motor controller is it could be your master switch on the side here. Um, so on the Thunder, you have two motor controllers. Um, on the Spider and the 3, you have one motor controller, um, but inside this one motor controller, you're still going to have the drive for the front and the rear. So you have power on this switch for the front and the rear. Um, so the first step we're going to do is take off this shrink wrap tubing and just uh, change the switch. Positive goes to this one, this positive goes to that one, and switch the negatives as well just to make sure it's not an issue with the switch and be able to rule that out first. Okay, so we got rid of the heat shrink tubes um, and now we're just gonna basically make sure your scooter's off first of all at the circuit breaker switch. Drain out any excess power just by hitting the power button on the throttle assembly. Um, then what we're gonna do is just take the positives off of this. We're gonna switch the positives. We're also going to switch the negatives. And then we're going to fire it back up. And we're having the same, the same issue. So it's not your switch. Um, so this leads me to believe it, it is going to be a motor control for sure. So if it is a bad switch, uh, basically your back wheel would have been spinning and your front wheel wouldn't. Um, so we can rule out the switch is good. Um, also, if, if you're wondering if it's a motor or a motor controller, if it's a bad motor, you're going to have a lot of resistance in the motor. Um, both of these uh, motors spin freely. Um, it's definitely not a bad motor, so, so this is definitely going to be a bad motor controller, which we're going to fix. Um, First step in fixing the motor controller is we're going to make a little bit of room up here for us. Um, we're going to do that by uh, unplugging this rear brake and just taking the brake cable and moving it out of the way. So with a five millimeter ratchet or a five millimeter Allen wrench, we're just going to pop this off, unscrew the brake from the caliper. Make a little bit of room here. We got our new motor controller lined up. Um, basically, we're going to remove our phase wires from the motor. Just pull back these cables. And what we're going to do, these phase wires are soldered in. Um, it's really a pain to unsolder them, so we just clip the wires really close to the, to the terminal ends. And we're going to be using new terminals. Um, you can just get the 16, 14 gauge bullet terminals, get them at like any auto parts store. We can give them to you if you need them. And then we're going to strip these wires.
just a little bit at the end. Okay, so now we strip the uh, wires, the phase wires for the front motor. We're gonna do the same thing for the rear motor. Just pull back these um, little wire covers. And then these bullet terminal ends, um, basically I'm just taking this outside cover off with an Allen, or with a uh, Allen wrench um, to get to this point. And then we're gonna pop those on the phase wires and we're gonna crimp them down. We're going to do that for all the phase wires, so all six of these. Okay, so we have these bullet terminals all uh, crimped down there. Um, what I like to do, this might be a little overkill, um, but I put a little bead of solder in um, right at the ends of the bullet terminals. Um, you might want to do that as well. Um, whenever you're soldering something, uh, soldering or desoldering, always tin the tip of your iron. Um, and then we're basically going to just press that on the on the back of the terminal Let it heat up a little bit and Then just add a bead of solder to the back and it's just going to wick right in there um, So that'll hold your wires on super securely. You're never gonna have to worry about that um, We're gonna do that for all three of these and Then for the front as well so next up, we're just going to remove the four screws at the bottom of the motor controller. So once you have your, your two motor controllers kind of lined up side by side, basically what you're going to do is just unplug the wires and plug them back into the new one. Um, it's pretty easy. Uh, first, we'll start with the wires from the switch, the power on the ground. You put your new heat shrink tube on there. We're just going to heat shrink these back up. You can use a special heater for that or a lighter is fine. Okay, we're just going to match up the wires we're unplugging and plug them back into the new motor controller.
So your speed limiting wires. You will have one on or two on your uh, brake cutoff switches where you actually have to take this wire out of the JST connector and plug it into the new one. So to do that, you just go on this side, tap down on that little tab. And you just pull it out. And then we're going to put it in this new one. Same for the back. Once you get all the wires plugged in, you can pull the old motor controller out. Take it apart if you want to see what's inside. And we're going to fit the new one back in here. Got our brake cut off switch. Brake cutoff switch goes to this guy there. And just try and keep all your wires clean. And we're gonna start working on our phase wires. So to do your phase wires, pull down these little rubber things. On the spiders, they're blue to blue, green to green, yellow to yellow on both. Basically, I just crimp these down until they click in. Just like that. And then what we're going to do is I put some more solder in here just uh, you get a better connection for the current. But before we do that, now that we have everything hooked up, um, I'm just going to cover the ends of these wires real quick and then flip the power on the scooter and make sure we have everything lined up properly. And should be good to go. Make sure none of the wires touching turn it on we got power both 
wheels are spinning the correct direction, your motors are lined up, you hit the single dual switch, your front motor cuts out. So everything is lined up. Um, what we're going to do now is just solder these connections together uh, and then screw in the motor controller and we're done. Um, it's not too bad a job. All right, once it's all soldered up here, just put these phase wire covers back on and you are going to be good to go. So to finish this up, you're just going to pull your brake cable back through, kind of arrange these wires the best you can there so the cover sits flat. And we're going to screw back down the motor controller. And then you're going to be totally good to go. So thanks for watching. Uh, hit the like button. I hope these videos are helpful. Um, if you do have any other questions or need more of an immediate response, uh, you can always give us a call, shoot us an email. Uh, we're always around to help. And uh, yeah, enjoy your scooters. They're, they're awesome. Um, if you ever have an issue, we're always here. Thanks.